So then you have these friggin' Italians, this sort of trio uh, or duo. I'm not entirely sure what the dynamic is, but it's generally three people who are credited. Uh, these friggin' Italians uh, who create this genre un unwillingly, like just by mistake, um, called the Mondo movie. So here's what it is. These guys who are like writers for magazines and also like cinematographers, Gualtiero Jacoperi, Paolo Cavara, and Franco Prosperi. Those are the three names. <laughs> uh, they created this movie called Mondo Cane. And Mondo Cane translates into a dog's world. And it's supposed to be sort of like a poetic literary quirk written in Italian, mondo, world, cane, dog, it's like world dog, or dog of, dog's world, you know, so the idea is that the world is sort of this indifferent dog, eat dog, you know, the forces of nature are indifferent to your needs, the way things bend under the force of nature is uncontrollable, this sort of like, you know, mondo cane, is this sort of like, you know, fuck <laughs> it's basically could have been a good alternative title to the movie came out in 1962 so look right just three years after the supposed end of the exotic exploitation genre in 1959 i mean these movies are going on the earliest is ingagi from 1933 and one of the latest that was extremely popular was mao mao from 1955 by the way that was just when the movie was first released these movies got milked by the exploitation filmmakers they were played over and over again over and over again sometimes under different titles in the same cities a few years later over and over again um so 1955 that movie was probably making money up until somewhere in the 60s but then you get these guys, these three Italian guys, and they make an artistic one called Mondo Cane. It's still shocking. It's still, there, there's a lot of nudity involved. Um, and it's got this, the principles of the exotic exploitation film, staging footage, showing the exotic other, the shocking and bizarre rituals, and then also the gratuitous nudity that's hidden under the mask of like, you know, journalistic right as a, document of actual lived life and all of its boldness and truth you know in the first amendment and this is life you can't censor life we're just documenting it you know uh <laughs> they really wanted to see tits back then um so that's the movie mondo kane it's this kaleidoscopic global travelogue showing you shocking and bizarre scenes from all different cultures uh, to make you think, wow, cultures are really arbitrary. Uh, life is so weird and funny, you know, but the spectacle on the screen, the draw or the allure is that things get kind of crazy. You know, there's a, a snake being skinned right before your eyes while the score is like, bam, 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 bam. It's this kind of goofy Italian score. And then when they skin the snake, the score goes, Whoop! and you're just like, ugh. <laughs> you know, it's a visceral reaction. Uh, you see people eating dog meat. You see uh, self-mutilation in religions. You see, like, rich, fancy people in New York City in some, in some posh restaurant eating a plate of bugs. <sighs> you know, you, the movie starts with a dog fight. I mean, it's just a crazy movie, Mondo Con. It's very popular. It smashed all the records. It was a global sensation. Everyone went fucking nuts for the movie. Um, you know, and it came out in 1962. So because of that, so as you can see, it's like the artistic reappropriation of the exotic exploitation film, which is a ripple of the earliest documentaries that were anthropological surveys, uh, ethnographic films. So you could see how from the very first documentaries, this this idea of the shock documentaries rippling out and having massive influence it sort of comes from the from the birth pang of the documentary film. It's it's a continuing wave from that explosion. This woman does not know she is being photographed. Our camera is hidden behind a two way mirror in an exclusive laundry shop in Chicago. <laughs> We 
They're now positioned behind a camouflage net in the Lebanon, near the Syrian border. You will spy on a slave auction that defies the laws of nature and God. In Mondo Bizarro. So... You have Mondo Kane, it's massively successful, and these filmmakers are then put to work for the rest of the decade to create more movies like them. So you have Women of the World. This is by the same filmmaking team, Jacopetti and Prosperi. You have Women of the World, 1963, made out of spare footage and some additional footage from the original Mondo Kane shoot. Mondo Kane 2, also built from the original footage from Mondo Kane, plus adding additional footage. Africa Adio, which is like the most uh, visually assaulting and brutal movie probably ever made, 1966. And then Goodbye Uncle Tom, which is like their artistic interpretation of an artistic interpretation of a genre. And it kind of eats itself in a way, uh, 1971. Okay. So, but because of Mondo Kane, although they were never able to uh, reach the same popularity or strike quite a nerve like they did with their first movie, Mondo Kane. You have a lot of movies and filmmakers inspired by that trying to capitalize on the demand for that hit of Mondo Kane. People wanted a hit of that Mondo Kane experience. They want to feel that way again. So there was a demand for the, for the, for the product, for different types of products. So what you get is a Mondo movie, which is basically like an exotic exploitation film, but sort of stylistically copying Mondo Kane. It's really just that simple. So you have these sort of cheaply made kaleidoscopic movies hiding once again under the premise of First Amendment and journalism and anthropological documentary surveying, like you're just capturing life and not, you know, why should you be blamed for showing the world as it is? Uh, you have these movies. Often they're titled with the word Mondo in front of it just to remind people walking down the street that this is a uh, you know, you're going to see certain things in this movie like that movie Mondo Kane. You know, you're going to see some gross shit. You're going to see some boobs. You're going to see some really weird stuff that's going to make you feel all right about you. Uh, so yeah, Mondo movies would play in sleazy movie theaters and sometimes they would be packaged as or with B films, you know, accompanying exploitation films that would play it well off each other. You know, there was a genre at the time called the atrocity film, which is a type of exploitation film from this period, from the classical period, 1919 through 1959. And they weren't like uh, Mondo movies. They were like um, atrocity films, things to show you death. You know, it was a really fucked up genre, things to show you death, like footage from Holocaust, um, uh, footage from the Holocaust, really, and uh, World War II stuff, or like car accident footage. Um, they would package it as like, you deserve to know the truth. Here's how cars, you know, the truth behind cars, or <laughs> the truth behind, you know, what they, what, what Time Magazine doesn't want you to know about Adolf Hitler. Here it is. See it in all its gruesome, you know, uh, manifestation of evil, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's got this, like, moral high horse about it on the poster, but it's really just, you know, these carnival guys who recut Holocaust footage um, and sold it to the public, right, with an alluring poster. Um, so, yeah, that, that would often be bundled with a, an exotic exploitation film, you know, or two exploitation, exotic exploitations would be bundled together or whatever. But Mondo kind of was its own thing. You know, it was like two hours long. It was this big feature. It was this huge endeavor. It was made by these three semi-celebrities. You know, it was a thing. And then all the movies that came out after that, they, you know, boop, they, again, the Mondo movies got economized. They got cheaper, faker, um, and the campaigns became more alluring, and they started to fulfill certain niches, you know, and... And they just kind of fed the desire created by the original Mondo movie. Um, so they were like exotic exploitation films, but they looked stylistically more like Mondo Kane. That's it. That's a Mondo movie. It is an exotic exploitation film copying the style of Mondo Kane. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all it is. No secret. Um, 
So I'm going to read you some of the titles. And okay, and these movies played, again, like other exploitation films, in seedy movie theaters in Times Square or in Los Angeles or in South Florida, um, down South Beach. And, you know, they would make a buck and they'd leave town if they caused too much of an uproar. Uh, so some of the titles are Mondo Nudo from 1963. Mala Mondo, 1964. Mondo Bellardo, 1964. Mondo Topless, 1966. Mondo Bizarro, 1966. This one's my favorite one. The following is my favorite title. Mondo Freudo, 1966. Mondo Hollywood, 1967. Which is, which is actually kind of a pretty good movie. Shocking Asia, 1974. This is the most fucked up movie I've ever seen in my life. Like, I couldn't even finish it. Like, I've usually I'm just like, I'm going to finish this movie. I don't care. It's just a movie. It's not going to conquer me. I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to watch this fucking movie. But Shocking Asia, I just couldn't do it. I got a feeling in my throat. I, I just felt sick, and I had to stop. Shocking Asia is the most fucked up movie I've ever seen. And it's part of the genre. And honestly, it's not a part of the genre I'm okay with. And that's something I'm also going to be talking about in a later one. Uh, this this whole genre across its travels through the 20th century becomes more and more fucked. Like, it just becomes grotesque. And I think that has to do with, like, a, I think there's a Marxist sort of socioeconomic exploit, uh, <laughs> exploitation, explanation for that. Uh but um, I'm not going to get into that right now. Anyways, uh, and then the final, actually, Mondo movie, quite interestingly, is from 1988 called Mondo New York is the final one, is the final one. <sighs> All the scenes that you are about to see are real and were shot as they were taking place. If sometimes they seem cruel, it is only because cruelty abounds on this planet and anyway, the duty of a reporter is not to make the truth seem sweeter, but to show things as they really are. So that's the Mondo movie, you know. 